The Hunger Games franchise is back, this time with an origin story. Does that mean they'll finally figure out a way to justify a government-endorsed child murder competition? Welcome to Movie World Plus, the place where we talk movies, plus whatever else I want to talk about in Hollywood. And yes, today we're here to talk about The Hunger Games, the ballad of songbirds and snakes. Whoo, uh, that's a big title. Uh, and yeah, look, I'm going to get into this review. I'm going to tell you what I think. But I'm going to warn you, I still got a problem with the entire premise of this book, this movie. I never understood how a world would allow itself to get to the place that it does in this series with Jennifer Lawrence. So I, I considered myself intrigued when I heard, okay, well, let's do an origin story on the games and uh, President Snow, that's right, Donald Sutherland's character from the, uh, you know, the villain from the movies. Uh, we're gonna see him as a young man and his upbringing in this. What made him turn into Snow? Uh, can he be redeemed? All this stuff that they're gonna ask the movie. But all of that said, and, and the movie had parts that I did enjoy more than I expected to. I will say that, but you really got to turn off your brain and justify this world where, yeah, there's a, a competition that the government is now forcing everyone to do to put two of their children into a arena and mur murder <laughs> the last one standing wins. Uh, and yeah, the movie definitely talks about how uh, a bad an idea that is. <laughs> they do attempt to give you reasons. Uh, still didn't work for me. Still didn't work for me. It's still just this like weird thing of like, why would the whole world not just revolt? Why would these districts allow it to get to this point? And when you rewind and you get to the early days of it all, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I, sure, I guess governments have done it, right? Uh, there have been leaders and people who have just controlled their people, um, uh, but still to have them all watching and nominating people in their district to go and that, that taking it too far to assume that that was going to keep everything in check. And if you're looking for an answer there, they'll try to give you one, but I don't think it's going to settle you. Uh, the film stars Rachel Ziegler, the internet's favorite actress out there. And I will say something about Rachel. She was better in this than I expected. Just because I don't like her in the person, you know, the interview she does, she has a just quality about her. That's very high of herself. I think she's just very young. She needs to grow up and mature and just, not chime in on everything. She doesn't know everything. And uh, I think she's starting to realize that I'm going to give her a pass on this one. She's not, she's not the problem in this movie. Uh, the movie really focuses on Tom Blythe playing or what is it? Ornelius snow president snow. I forget his weird first name, uh, but he's president snow. That's right. Donald Sutherland from the first films. He plays the young Donald's Donald Sutherland. And yeah, sure. A hotter version um, of snow, but there he is. Uh, of course, uh, he is, uh, here's the premise. I guess I can tell you this. If you haven't read the book, a lot of you maybe have, uh, the premise of the movie is that the hunger games, this is the 10th annual hunger games that we're going into. They will talk about how it all started, but we're focused on the 10th anniversary. Uh, and the games are starting to not be as popular with the districts. Surprise, surprise. Uh, they don't want to watch their kids be murdered. Wow. Weird. Uh, so they, uh, have the, the, rich people of the capital, the kids are through an academy to raise up, of course, because there's a young academy in charge of this too. But they're the rich kids. So they're, for some reason, put in with a uh, one of the kids from the Hunger Games and they must watch them is what the sort of premise of the movie is. And so each capital child who's smart and academic will be fitted with a person from there. And then the winner of the games or the person who... Uh, the, what are they? They're the aides is what these, the guys in the red suits are. They're the rich capital people. They will team up with the kids in the hunger games and whoever makes the biggest splash potentially, you know, will have their, you know, dreams come true. Um, that's the premise. Of course, we have snow teamed up, uh, with, uh, Rachel Ziegler's character. Uh, why am I already forgetting her name? That's how memorable it is. Even though they literally sing and say her full name a hundred times in the movie. <laughs> How did I already forget it? I saw this movie last. That's how memorable these characters are. Uh, I'm going to kick myself when I finally see it. Uh, here it is. Hold on. It's coming. Her name is Lucy. Uh, Lucy something. Uh, how did I forget? How how on earth did I forget uh, Lucy? Uh, it makes no sense because they literally sing her name a billion. Lucy Gray. There it is. Uh, Lucy Gray, Lucy Gray, Lucy Gray. They say it a hundred times and I still 
was like, Psh, don't care. Uh, anyway, Lucy and uh, uh, Snow are, what's his first name? Sorry, I should have probably prepped this, and, but this just shows you the level of respect I had for this film. Snow, Cornelia, Corillian, Cor Corillianus. <laughs> that sounds dirty. <laughs> Corillianus? Mm, Lucy, Lucy Gray, are you up for some Corillianus? Uh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, really close to something else. All right, but obviously you can't have a Hunger Games without a Hunger Games. And some of the other sequels, the Hunger Games had that problem of like, oh crap, we want a Hunger Games. There's no Hunger Games. This one does give you a Hunger Games. I will say that. Uh, I, I guess that's the best part. Sure. Um, the third act of this movie is way too long. I, the movie has three acts. It literally chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And when the chapter three title came on, I was like, no, what? I thought the movie was done. What, what, what? <laughs> can we go home? The whole third chapter is unnecessary. Clearly stuff from the book that I just think they could have done faster in a movie. I wasn't that impressed. It doesn't give you that much on the character's motivations and things. Uh, I think the last act, a lot of this movie could have been trimmed. It was too long. It was way too long. And I want to talk about my next big problem. And it's not Rachel Zegler. Like, she's fine. She's clearly, like, you know, beautiful and quirky and trying to make this role work. I do think she's trying. She can sing well. Uh, but the character as written is all over the place. And not, like, in a fun, you know, good way. Just bad writing way. Where at one point, she's very sneaky and clever. And you're like, ooh, what's going on? And then the next moment, she's, I love you. Ah, la, 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 la. And I just, I'm like, what? The, the payoff, there's no payoff to that. It's just bad writing. It's just bad writing. And, and I think there could have been more of a payoff. And that's my biggest frustration with this movie is I don't ever really understand what her motives are. Uh, and that, as a character, is really a disappointment. And... Uh, you de the movie definitely, you know, is around uh, Snow's character. Like, it's a Snow movie. It's the origin of, of Snow, why he became Snow. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he's the she's the muse. And uh, I'll leave it at that. But I, 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 I wanted, there, there was potential there to really help it, I think, hit it even harder and justify it when you're like, oh, wow. And they attempt it. I'm not trying to spoil or tell you anything. But, uh yeah, it's just a mixed bag of character development and character arcs, and you're sort of just left with like, wait, what? Uh, okay, wait, okay, I see what you're trying to do, but no. Uh, the film also features Peter Dinklage as playing yet another drunk. He has now seems to <laughs> get shoehorned in another type of character. Not the one you'd expect Peter Dinklage to get in. No, he is now shoehorned in alcoholic. And once again, uh, always just drinking something and uh, uh, it's very reminiscent of other Peter Dinklage performances and it's frustrating because I'd love to see him do other things and he's managed to get himself out out of the little people roles but now he's literally always playing uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, that's that's now the typecast he's fallen into I guess better for him good congrats he's he's I, I love him and I like him but I was just very underwhelmed by his involvement in this film even though he's a big fan. Viola Davis, though, does come to play. She plays like the game master, the person who's been figuring out all the games, which, again, that's another big problem I have with this movie. Like, what year is this? Like, in, in, the, in the Hunger Games franchise, it is so confusing, the technology they have. There's invisible domes and create CGI creatures that are interacting. Like, it gets, it gets absurd in Hunger Games. They have all this money, but they can't make artificial bread for everybody just to not be hungry. It makes no sense. Uh, and so she plays the game master and of course has to deal with some snakes and there's a, anyway, she's given it her best of all the actors in this. She clearly came to play. Viola Davis is no joke. She's a real deal actress and she comes ready to just chew this character like, yeah. and it's definitely the most interesting character of the mix. But my God, I hope we don't get the origin story of her next. Uh, and then, yeah, Jason Schwartzman is the host. Uh, he's playing like the shwarmy host and he's good. He's funny. He's definitely like, it's like, it's like disturbingly like no, no empathy for these children. He's just the rich snob hosting it, trying to get the attention. O overall, like, yeah, it's like, I, I, I weirdly, even though it sounds like I didn't hate it, I, I did, I was getting bored. It was way too long. 
Um, you have to sort of succumb to the premise of the movie. And I, I should have known that going in because it's a Hunger Games movie. It says it right there. And uh, you got to get over that problem because it is a weird problem that this world still allows these children to do this thing. I understand they're trying to control them and they try to justify it, but it still doesn't make any sense. People would revolt. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's a mixed bag for me. Better than I thought it would be, if I'm being honest. There's definitely some interesting parts as these films go. It's well made. Francis Lawrence does a good job at the direction. Um, it's just, again, a prequel to something I didn't really need and didn't really add a lot to it to me. And the relationship at its heart between, um, you know, the two love interests, potential love interests, uh, Snow and Lucy, not worth it. Wasn't worth it to me in the end of it. So ultimately I got to say pfft, thumbs down for Hunger Games. It's a big distraction. If you like the previous movies, uh, you'll probably enjoy this one. It's fine. It's a distraction, but not one I'd rush to in theaters. Like it's one of those like, okay, it's on a streamer. Um, I got nothing to do for three hours. Let me check it out just to be a completionist. Great. Enjoy yourself. Uh, there it is. That's my thoughts. Curious what you think. Are you guys excited about this one? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, you can also hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for alerts, smash the like button. If you want more movie world content, if you like me ranting about movies and, uh, tell me your thoughts, uh, down below what you think. Appreciate you guys so much. Stay tuned for more reviews and movie news coming here to movie world plus.